The next person, again, I, we're, I, I'm riffing off of, of and this, these two, the idea of multiple screens multi and so forth, playing out with, with what David was doing with, with multiple screens. And I had the great good fortune a few weeks ago in, in New York to attend Adam Curtis's uh, sensorium, mind-blowing uh, 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 thing that he did at the Park Avenue Armory. Were any of you there? Did any of you see it? Um, uh, anyway, the, uh, he, he, he is the foremost, one of the foremost documentarians in the world with the BBC. He has an instrument that he plays, which is one of the great instruments anyone could ever have, which is the BBC Film Archive. The BBC News Ar Division Archive, they have everything. They have all the ads that were on television in Egypt in the 1950s, which, by the way, are weird. Uh, you can understand a lot about the Middle East with these ads. Uh, but but um, he has access to everything, and he, he kind of, he's a documentarian the way that Keith Jarrett is a, is a uh, piano player. I mean, he's, he basically does improvisations. Uh, much of his work, his work hardly ever appears in the United States. It is essential viewing. You can see it online if you go to archive.org, not archive.com. Everything is .org today. Um, and if you go to archive.org, you can look up Adam Curtis. He also has a blog. Uh, and his documentaries, if you have not seen The Power of Nightmares, you don't understand the 20th century. I'm sorry. Uh, and similarly, The Century of the Self. He has a great one uh, called uh, All Looked Over by Machines of Loving Tenderness, I think is the title. But the thing he did, uh, he decided he wanted to get out of the editing booth and to get out in the world. And he created, uh, with his friends from the, from the Bristol rock group Massive Attack, a kind of Sonny Lumiere immersive experience that went on for 90 minutes. And if you were in the audience, you were in the middle of the Park Avenue Armory, and there were 11 screens, oddly enough, almost like in a concave area all around you. Uh, he would have been here, except he's been assigned to do some emergency BBC work, so he can't be here. But uh, I'm going to show, give you a sense of uh, just a section of what happened at the Park Avenue Armory. You're going to start with 11 screens, and you won't really be able to see it well. Uh, and then at a certain point, by the magic of working with the technical wizards out there who really are doing the most magnificent job, and you guys, uh, Richard, wherever you are, have a great crew here. Uh, anyway, uh, you will see me go like that, and, and what will happen is we'll go from 11 screens just to one so you can watch the actual section that we're going through, and then I'll go like that again, and we'll go back to the 11 just so you can see. In this particular, the general idea of this particular piece was that we are slowly following into a, magist, a, a managerial sarcophagus. We are basically, everything is managed for us. Uh, everything is quantified. Uh, it's, uh, there, it, whether it's in the Soviet Union, uh, former Soviet Union, Russia, it starts with Putin in this particular section, or Osama bin Laden. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And then it, what will begin to happen in this particular section is he, he's going to say, with stuff that you can't really read uh, on the 11 screens, but I'll tell you, is that Osama bin Laden himself was also wanting to have a kind of managed thing. He didn't want to have democracy because that would be infected with all the Western desires. So it had to be managed the same way that Putin thinks that things have to be managed, and frankly, the same way that, that Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan think that things have to be managed. Uh, but in his case, he says that one of the things that was fascinating is that we all began to have the same fantasies, and then in fact, the fan that Osama was living out kind of John Wayne fantasies in Afghanistan, and then was beginning to be infected by the fantasies the West itself was having. So that's what we'll be seeing here. So let's start it up and see what happens. Where do you find 
doors to the panic room closed. Which is a way of describing the TSA, by the way, and for that matter, describing the NSA. Isn't that amazing? Um, and that, just for you, just so you understand, uh, that went on for 90 minutes, uh, and it was quite an astonishing piece. And if you think that's interesting, you really, really have to go see the Power of Ni you have to watch the Power of Nightmares. The Power of Nightmares, by the way, is his explanation of the way in which uh, it's a parallel history of uh, of Islamic fundamentalism and American neoconservatism, and how uh, they start at the same time in 1948 out of the same roots. They find each other ecstatically in Afghanistan and both support each other uh, against the Soviets. They both emerge absolutely convinced that they and they alone brought down the Soviet Union, uh, and then are expecting to be greeted triumphantly when they return, and are not in either Saudi Arabia or Egypt, or in the case of the, the neocons, they get Bill Clinton, which they really can't understand. Uh, and they're basically washed up until they find each other again at 9-11 and become each other's closest allies. That, by the way, is what actually happened over the last 20 years, and, and, and nobody phrases it quite as interesting as, as he does. Anyway, enough of that. Um, the thing I was trying to bring out there, uh, again, was, it, it, the reason I thought of it when I was putting this together uh, was just the, the, the quality of immersion that happens when you're standing in front of David's 18 screen pieces and so forth. And, and this, uh, what happened, I mean, in other words, you saw it there as a single screen, but if you were with 11 on the going, and they're basically showing the same thing, there's something quite interesting that happens. And it, has, it indeed has something to do, even when it's exactly the same image of breaking down one point perspective, and at this point having 11 different things coming at you. And it makes a huge difference.